What's up everybody? My name is Russ, rwgresearch.com and quantumgravityresearch.org. Alright, so an update for you. Um, this is kind of a cold, a cold fusion thing I'm working on, so this isn't really an update, but what I'm trying to show you is I have this device behind me that I've torn a, a, a completely apart. This is actually a DSC, a Differential Scanning Calorimeter. And what this device does is it takes a sample and a control and it measures the heat difference between the two and it actually can record that. It can record very, very small measurements down into the uh, very, very low milliwatt into the microwatt range. Pretty cool stuff. However, the, most of these units that you can purchase, they're very, very expensive uh, and you can buy them that do sealed systems. Most of them are open systems. So um, TGA uh, is also another instrument. Um, it's a basically a weight measurement and heat difference. It's also usually used with one of these at the same time or they kind of go hand in hand. Uh, however, I'm just going to kind of give you an update on what I'm doing with this machine because normally what I do is go through this long-winded process of showing you the entire thing and this time I am about 10 to 15 percent into tearing this thing apart and I thought I'd show you what I got right now instead of going through the whole thing. So this is going to be sort of a long-winded uh, video but it's going to be in short sections. So let's get started. So like I said I've completely disassembled this already so it's a mess and I'm just going to kind of go through it really really quickly. This is the unit. Now this is actually a um, a Seiko instrument uh, 5200 and it basically is a DSC, a differential scanning calorimeter. So uh, currently the cell, I've completely dismantled it. Uh, it's not designed to come out of this um, base plate but I I had to take it out because of what I want to do with it. So here is basically what the, the head looks like, the cell. Um, so if you look inside of here there are two tiny sample holders. So you actually put your sample inside of a small pan, aluminum, silica, uh, or I mean alumina, or uh, some other type. Uh, currently I have aluminum pans. They look like this. And they just sit inside there and your sample sits on top of them. So um, you basically flow a gas over top of these, usually uh, air or argon or something like that, an inert gas. And you just measure the difference in, uh, in the um, heat, uh, exothermic or endothermic, as you heat it. So this element around here, this big giant block that looks all discolored, that's stainless steel. And I believe that right there is actually um, silver. So this whole thing is made of silver. And right inside of here there's a heating element. That's these two heavy duty wires that come out of here. So you heat the sample very slowly and you determine uh, when its phase changes are between, uh, it'll give off an exothermic or endothermic peak. Very uh, simple device and very, very, very precise. So this instrument is actually quite expensive. This is an older one that we got used, refurbished, and it does have the software with it, which is the hardest part to find, actually. Um, so there's actually 10 thermal couples tied onto those two cells right there, five on each one. Okay, and here they are, these, uh, let me see if I can get a really good shot. I had to dismantle this, and these wires are very, very fragile because they're very, uh, they're made of materials that are, um, that are basically very stiff and rigid, so they're easy to break, but they're really, really strong. Um, I believe one of them is nickel and one of them might be iron. I don't remember, but look up thermocouplers. They're all made of different metals. And then there's two more thermal couples here. This is actually reading the temperature with inside of this heating block, so it can get that measurement as well. With all this data, it all runs into some really nice uh, opto-isolated uh, amplifiers and signal conditioners, and all this gets converted into a nice chart that you can read on the computer. Very precise stuff. Um, so this cell was attached to this big giant plate and what I want to do is because this is a flow cell, I want to encapsulate it. So I'm going to go ahead and encapsulate this whole thing and that's kind of what I'm working on. So this is what it looks like at the moment. This is sort of phase one. Tear this sucker apart. It was a serious, serious challenge to get this thing apart. 
but I managed to. This circuit board is just sitting here. What my real problem was, was that if you look, these used to be holes on this circuit board, and they put these thermal couples through the holes, and then they also go through the holes here and stick out of the bottom. Now the problem with that is, is I wanted to machine this block or make a new block, and I had to be able to take this out. So I had to unsolder all these little bitty guys and get this to work. Very challenging to do that, but I was able to do it. And, uh, and now we can go ahead and make a new block or a new system, make it really compact and small because we want this cell inside of a pressure chamber that we can pressurize and pull a vacuum on. So they do, like I said, they do make these pressure cells, but they're very expensive. And uh, this seems like the best option is take a working unit, modify it, and we can get some serious heat measurements. So this is a device that I, uh, well, I haven't shown anybody. I've been working on for a while. It's been on the live stream. I've been working on it live, but I haven't touched it in a while. This was uh, the basic part of a calorimeter that I was building. Uh, this is basically the inside of the cell here, and here is my probes that are inside of there. So this is sort of an overcomplicated system, and it kind of mm, didn't exactly work. I wouldn't say it didn't work the way I wanted to. It'll work great, but it's overkill. Uh, and I'm not going to be able to get as precise measurements, and it'll be harder to work with and everything in between. So I'm going to take some of these pieces and parts. I machined all of these Teflon parts, started to make this cell, and then decided to, uh, to go ahead and hold and, uh, and look into a, an easier, better method, which happens to be the DSC. So I'm going to be using some of these parts. Most likely end up using this as my um, isolated chamber. This is actually stainless steel. Made these up nice and shiny. What's up? Uh, yeah. So anyway, moving on. We will, I don't know, in a couple of weeks have something new to share. Alrighty then. So yeah, that's what I've been working on the last week or so now. It's, uh, it's a tedious process. Uh, I actually had to grind off some of the very, very small epoxy on those thermocouple wires. Kind of sketchy stuff. If I nip one of those, they go into that cell, whole thing is shot. So uh, a little bit of a tedious, delicate process. So the idea here is exactly what I explained to make a pressure closed cell with a, a working DSC. Um, yeah, so leave me a comment, let me know what you think. I think I'm going to go ahead and just let this video be as it is, so it's a short, sweet little update. And then, uh, and then the next phase, when we get a little bit further, I'll just post another update video. That's all I know. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Good idea, bad idea, helpful things, not helpful things. Comments are good. Okay, see you later.